watched Loki episode 4 at least 4 times already and I have so many thoughts and questions. And this video is obviously going to have spoilers for Loki episode 4 since I'm going to be going through my thoughts and then I'm going to try to answer some of the questions from the episode including what was Sylvie's Nexus event? Where did Loki go when he was pruned at the end? And who is really in charge of the TVA? originally brought Sylvie in. I wonder how she got promoted after she accidentally let her escape. And also what happened to the old judge guy? From Owen Wilson's Mobius, we did hear a how and a now, but not a wow. I think they're just teasing us now because apparently we're not gonna get a wow in the show. Apparently what makes a Loki a Loki is the fact that they don't die, which is a nice callback to all of the times that Loki has supposedly died in the MCU, but not really. Oh hey, Lady Sif, the haircut was a fun reference to the Norse mythology that I definitely wouldn't have understood if I hadn't just read Gospel of Loki. What memory do we think that Sylvie showed B-15? Probably just something with friends or family, but it also makes me wonder when and where is she from? Also, will B-15 join up with Sylvie? Probably because it looks like at the end she just got knocked out. She didn't like die or anything. No, not Mobius! And the relationship between Sylvie and Loki is so awkward, but I kind of love it. Also, was the Nexus spike actually caused by the budding relationship or was that just something Mobius was saying to get into Loki's head? <gasps> not Loki! Mobius and C20 are still alive too? I hope so. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Let's move on to trying to answer the big questions from the episode. First, what was Sylvie's Nexus event? Apparently I was incorrect in my assumptions last week that Sylvie was adopted by different parents based on the fact that she asked Loki about his parents and that she knew she was adopted. My bad. It looks like she was adopted by Odin and Frigga because she did grow up in Asgard and she did refer to herself as goddess of mischief, but it looks like she only lived there for a few years before the TVA showed up. Kaylee Fleming, who plays young Sylvie, would have been 13 at the time of filming, but she does also look young, so I wouldn't be surprised if the show placed her character's age at around 11 or 12, especially considering the way she was playing with toys when the TVA showed up, but that's still 11 years where her timeline is even just slightly different than that of the sacred timeline. However, Sylvie did explain her situation like this. As soon as that created a big enough detour from the sacred timeline, the TVA showed up. Apparently, her timeline didn't deviate enough until this specific moment, and that's how she survived 11 plus years. At first, I interpreted her line to mean that there was like a conglomeration of events that eventually led to her being too different from our Loki. Like, it wasn't just one Nexus event that caused the TVA to go after her. Little bits built up over the years until she was too different for the sacred timeline. But I don't think that's what it was supposed to mean, especially since later in the episode, Sylvie asked Ravona what her Nexus event was, meaning that she does believe that there was one single Nexus event that caused her to be taken by the TVA. That conversation also makes me wonder if Ravona actually doesn't remember what Sylvie's Nexus event was. I mean, I'm sure she's run into plenty of other variants since then, and so I wouldn't be surprised if she's forgotten, but also I wouldn't be surprised if she was just being a jerk about it and basically tr trying to communicate to Sylvie that she's worthless, like she's not even worth remembering why she became a variant. But anyway, I'm assuming that there is one specific Nexus event or like one specific reason why the TVA came after her. And for some reason, her toys have to be significant because when the Minutemen reset the timeline, the toys are disintegrated. If you look closely, Sylvie's not just playing with a Valkyrie and a dragon figure. There is also a giant wolf next to the ship. Could that be Fenris? Could there be a Hela figure nearby? I think that her Nexus event could have been learning about Hela. It's pretty clear at the beginning of Thor Ragnarok that neither Thor nor Loki knew that Hela existed. Existed. So it's quite possible that them just knowing about her could have changed the events of Ragnarok significantly. They could have been prepared and fewer lives would have been lost. They could have trapped Hela again and not faced the destruction of Asgard. Who knows? My only question about this now is that if something that small is enough to notify the TVA, why didn't that happen when she first found out she was adopted? Surely that would have changed the events of the first Thor movie at least a little bit. Unless maybe she found out she was adopted just a few minutes before the TVA showed up. But if that was the case, I feel like she would have put two two together and realized that her knowing she was adopted was the Nexus event once she found out that Loki didn't know that he was adopted when he was a kid. It is also possible that she could have known that she was adopted but not known her true parentage and not known that she was technically a frost giant, in which case the reveal in the first Thor movie would have had essentially the same impact. But 
Either way, I think that Sylvie's Nexus event was learning about Hela. Now, on to question number two. Where did Loki go when he was pruned at the end? As soon as Loki got disintegrated at the end, I was like, no, that can't actually be it. He can't really be dead. So while the credits were running, I got thinking. I thought that maybe pruning isn't actually disintegration, but teleportation. I was reminded of season one of Doctor Who, where the Doctor, Rose, and Jack all show up in various game shows in the distant future, and losers of those game shows get disintegrated. Except it turns out that they don't actually get disintegrated, but teleported across space to the Daleks, where the Daleks can use them to build their army. So during the two minutes and 22 seconds before the mid credit scene, I came up with this whole explanation. I thought pruning would actually send them elsewhere in the TVA. Like, how have they been able to collect so many willing volunteers to work for the TVA? What happens is they must teleport them to a separate training site at the TVA, and while they're teleported, it locks them out of their own memories. What if the person behind the TVA has been creating variants on purpose to slowly build up their army? But then the mid credit scene happened and Loki showed up in some city ruins, so that must not be quite right. Although the idea where pruning equals teleportation does seem to be right. It's possible that other variants would be teleported to elsewhere in the TVA, and it's specifically Loki variants that are teleported to this other dimension because they pose a specific threat to the TVA. But it seems like to me that neither the TVA employees nor the android timekeepers know that pruning is actually teleportation. Like, look at Ravona's face when Mobius is pruned. She actually looks genuinely upset. And there is this poster in the hallway that implies that deletion is synonymous to pruning. Plus, the timekeepers themselves say delete them when ordering for Sylvie and Loki to be pruned. And it doesn't seem like the timekeepers are building their TVA workforce from pruning because they make an offer to Sylvie to talk. So maybe they do just offer this option to variants when they plead guilty. But anyway, Loki is definitely teleported somewhere, and I'm gonna venture to say that it is a separate dimension where everything that is pruned or disintegrated by reset charges goes. Now, I don't think that the multiverse exists in terms of different parallel universes with infinite variations on the MCU timeline yet, but the multiverse does have to exist as defined by Doctor Strange, which is the different dimensions that coexist with our dimension, and one of those dimensions could be where the TVA sends all of its pruned or reset stuff. In the background, you can see all of these buildings shooting up out of the ground at different angles, including a version of Stark Tower that is in ruins, but they're all at like weird angles, so it's almost like they just like appeared after being reset at different times in different timelines, but all like in this super close space, so it's like all funky. So yeah, that's where Loki ended up, and hopefully Mobius too, in this separate dimension where everything pruned goes. Now I just can't wait to see how Sylvie finds out that Loki's still alive. I bet she'll end up getting pruned too. And with that, we are to the last and biggest question from this episode. Who is really in charge of the TVA? I've seen plenty of theories, including King the Conqueror, Ravona Renslayer, Miss Minutes, Doctor Doom, another variant of Loki, and Mephisto, although that last one's just there for the meme. My husband even said, what if Sylvie was behind it all and she's just messing with Loki for the lols? So Mephisto and Sylvie theories aside, because those are just a joke, out of the remaining options, I really doubt Doctor Doom because they wouldn't waste his introduction now when there's real possibility of the Fantastic Four joining the MCU somewhat soon. Miss Minutes is an interesting theory, but it just doesn't quite make sense to me. Like, is she an AI that set up the whole thing, or is it just some other mystery person who uses this animated persona at the TVA? In which case, that still doesn't really answer our question of who's running the TVA and where they came from. So the big possibilities are King the Conqueror, Ravona herself, and another variant of Loki. The next person I'm gonna boot off is Ravona, because as much as she's been a sketchy character this whole time, from this episode it just didn't seem like she even knew the time Timekeepers were androids. Under the best of circumstances, it's jarring to stand before the timekeepers. Plus, this episode showed that she hasn't always had her position as a judge, so even if she's high up in the TVA, she can't be the one to have started it. Then there's all the King the Conqueror theories, which I totally used to buy into. I totally thought those were the case until like this week. There seems to be a lot of references to him, and it seems like a good way that they could set up his character in preparation for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. But then I heard these different theories about another variant of Loki running the TVA. And I just think that this fits better. I mean, the 
the whole show is about Loki, and we already know that there are at least six variations of Loki in the show as of this past episode. What if there's one more variation of Loki who is like a completely evil variant? I mean, our Loki in the MCU is more of an anti-hero, but I know like traditionally in old comics, he was totally a villain. And even our 2012 variant of Loki wanted to take over the TVA when he found out about it. So imagine if the TVA was originally created by an evil variant of Loki. Plus that would make sense as to why some of the most dangerous variants the TVA's ever faced have been variations of Loki. But whoever is behind the TVA, I think that we will find out this coming episode. In case you missed it, after Sylvie chopped off the head of the central timekeeper, there was an eerie voice in the background saying, see you soon. Listen to it right here. Let me play that again for you so you don't miss it at all. It's hard to catch because it blends in with the hissing sound of the timekeeper's power sizzling out, but it's definitely there. And I don't know, sounds like something an evil Loki variant would do, teasing Sylvie and Loki like that. I can't wait to find out who it is in the next episode. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. Comment down below who you think is really in charge of the TVA and what you think is gonna happen in episode five and any other answers you have to questions that I asked in my video. Episode five comes out tomorrow, so you only have a couple couple more hours to make your predictions. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed watching, check out more of my Loki and Marvel videos, and subscribe so you don't miss my next Loki video, and I will see you next time. Bye!